Um, um, well, I'm going to have to expand this. And just before we start, these are just my opinions about you know, why, why I am attracted to the abstract in art, you know? Anyway, when I was a sixth former, and that was about 87 years ago, I was set an essay on Walter Pater's Nostrum. All art continuously aspires the condition of music. That's very Victorian speech, isn't it? He was professor of aesthetics at Oxford, and, and um, yes. And yeah, anyway, I was set that question. And, and th this talk on abstraction is part of that answer. Towards abstraction, for me, is the same thing as saying all art has passed the condition of music. For is not music the most abstract of forms? There's no translation, as in seeing, smelling, tasting. No, it's direct. Hear the music, get the feeling, straight to the heart. You know, it's only rock and roll, or whatever. <laughs> well, dancing, you see, is a sort of direct thing of music, isn't it? So the purpose of art is to generate feelings, create mood. And I feel that this is easier when it's free to make shapes, colors, tones, in any way one pleases. Using everything one knows about painting, it is an exciting way to paint, because the painting must paint itself. I have to ask it, what do you want? Where are we going? Get it right? Bingo. If you get it wrong, bugger, reprime the canvas. Well, we're a third of the way through. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish I could get nervous. It's good that this process is hazardous, and it's essential. Otherwise, it becomes graphic design. And yes, there is an art to that as well. You know, I mean, graphic design's good. My favorite, my favorite bit of graphic design is Coca-Cola writing. You know that. Um, it's got a kind of, if you musically, it goes, Dah, I can't do it, I can't do it. But you know what I mean. Um, hazardous, uh, because the more, more one has to lose, the more one has to gain. I see it as a balancing act between first and foremost composition, followed by all its constituent parts, color, tone, temperature, and so on. Yes. Uh, just a word about composition. You know, the composition of paintings is what attracts you to looking at, you know. And, uh, well, um, I mean, if you go through all the Italian churches, you know, looking and looking and looking, boy, there's some, you know, very ordinary paintings, but you come across a Raphael, bang, what composition is this? You know, it pulls your eye. Well, anyway, composition and all its constituent parts, color, tone, temperature, shape, paint quality, and all those things that go to make up a feeling. Composition, how colors, shapes, and tones are arranged on the picture plane. This is primarily important, always has been. But there's a rightness about the paintings in Lasso, the caves, you know, bison, just, it's got real presence. Um, and I personally love the early Renaissance pa painters, Giotto, um, Masaccio, and Cimabui. You probably don't know Cimabui, but he made, uh, 
um, um, crucifix, you know, it was all church stuff. And it was, it's on the wall, and there's the cross like that, flat on the wall, and he bent the head of Christ forward. So you look up at this thing, this, you know, it works a treat. <laughs> you know, it could, the, the, no holds barred. Um, in Masaccio, uh, in the expulsion from the Garden of Eden, um, uh, the, the gates, the portal, the gates of the Garden of Eden, and they're being cast out. And to make sure you understand, Masaccio has little black lines, you know, shouting out of the door, black lines, just like that. It's a very brave compositional trick, isn't it? Uh, no whole bars to get the message across. It always has, it's always been there. And yes, in more recent times, it was the credo of the Bauhaus. If it is good, it will attract the eye and for, um, invite one to look deeper. It's the eye candy. Whew. I'm not used to this, you know. <laughs> when he was asked uh, whom he preferred, Beethoven or Mozart, Albert <coughs> Einstein, an accomplished mus musician himself, he was actually, he chose at one point not to go play music, you know, violin. He would go to do science, you know, so he was pretty good. Um, so he replied, Mozart, for he's a songbird. It just pours out of him. Mozart, Mozart wanted to make his music look simple. It's not. Whereas Beethoven is more cerebral. One can see what he means. You know, the late works. They're taking a bit, bit of deciphering. But then Paul Ludwig was deaf. You know, um, for instance, in the pastoral, there were bir there's bird song, and you know, um, but he couldn't hear that. Now, it's completely marinated in his head. But boy, as far as the music being the most abstract art form, couldn't be a blind painter. He couldn't be a uh, never mind. Do you know the legend of the circus worker who receives the call and goes to a monastery? He's not a very good monk, gluttony, gluttony boozing, lechery, just the usual stuff, and sneaks off on his own every day to some rendezvous. The abbot, curious, follows him to the chapel and finds him in a work cloud of whirring clubs. Whirling, perhaps, you yeah. <laughs> know in front of the statue of the Virgin. The uh, abbot is about to apprehend our hero when the statue of the Virgin, Virgin raises her hand and stops him. <laughs> so as any, if juggling is the only way a monk can pray, the painting is that for me. Painting is practical and pantheism. It's a deep-seated desire to give thanks for one's existence and the existence of all that surrounds us. The miracle in the world and the sun and the moon have all shaped um, all that I see and feel. Yeah, what a blessing it all is, eh? Ah. Well, that's my 20-minute speech. But I thought I would uh, carry on and talk about a couple of paintings that I'm working on right now. I'll go and get them.
Oh, good on you. Look at that. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the light's a bit different in here compared with my studio. Just <laughs> um, <coughs> Sorry. I, I, I wanted to. Um, uh, um, I wanted to. I developed a game. I developed a game. It's the glass bead game. You know. Do you know anyone know about the glass bead game? Yes. Herman Hesse, compulsory reading in the 60s. <laughs> Couldn't make head or tail of it. I could you? <laughs> There you are, yeah, yeah. Anyway, because as in composition is territorial, you know, how much of this, how much of that, look at that, passable. Um, uh, 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 yeah, it's territorial, it's like chess or go or. I wanted to do it with. Um, well, here, here's a, a game I won hands down. <laughs> but you, the idea is to get dots uh, going across the canvas, joined up across the canvas. You know, the um, green dots and the blue dots and that one. Um, um, yeah, and it's all about chroma and tone, you know. Um, uh, um, yes, so how can I explain that? But you can see where the greens are the same tone as the, the background. They get a kind of zip. Anyway, <laughs> and that's, uh, this is a similar thing. I saw them as, um, <coughs> sorry, I, I, I drink the water. Um, I saw it as, um, I saw it as uh, a key. And this one is, uh, for me, just G, natural G, very merry key, you know. Um, God, my voice like this. Anyway, I could try and, you know, the uh, little few, Bach's little few, just bum, bum, bum. It's, um, you can't help but, you know, it's a brilliant like flight of an insect or something. Yeah. And um, this one I saw in D minor. And that again, Bart, Carter and Fugue, is. Um, you know it's take I think I've answered the question of what all artists pass the condition of music. Of it. Any questions? Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
thank you very much, George. I particularly enjoyed that, particularly the unexpected last uh, postscript. Mm -hmm. It could be photographed. Do something I prepared earlier. Yeah, uh, yeah. Could be graphed. Uh, so I was, uh, yeah, I, I like to talk, and I particularly liked your uh, tautness of it, which fits the oh, thank you. theme of abstraction, obviously, uh, and your implied history of abstraction, going from the caves of Lascaux to uh, mm. early Renaissance people, the amazing sort of uh, vibrant colour field of Giotto, and I guess other people later on, like Cousin, yeah. on. got this implied history that goes right through. Uh, that implies that we're, you know, abstraction's a long way coming. And yeah. It's sort of re refinement. And I like the way you talk about graphic art too, which is an abstraction. Yeah. But perhaps it's not as interesting as other works that we see as abstract uh, because it pairs things down so completely so that you can get the Coca-Cola uh, logo you know, when you're driving past a billboard or in yeah, 30 seconds yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And that's arresting for a moment, but you couldn't mm. live with it on the wall. It's not fascinating. So yeah. uh, from what I understand, what you were saying is there's, uh, if it's too pared down and too schematic and too simple uh, an abstraction, it gets a bit boring. It's it, not resonant. It's not alive. Uh, yeah. So I was wondering what, where you would say the median point is that works between the utter simplicity of abstraction, we compare it right back, uh, and the com complexity of other art forms, including the ones you mm. talked about and championed in terms of you know, those transitional pieces between medieval and renaissance, which are pretty amazing. Yeah, they yeah. Use colour and so on. Boy, oh boy, what a question. Well, the other uh, question I had was, uh, wait, yeah. I, I, that looks like, uh, to me, that just looks like vaccination. I mean, it just looks like uh, <laughs> the vaccine attacking mm. viruses in the blood. But uh, that might be just a contemporary mm. preoccupation. Yeah. You don't have to say anything, mm. so that's a bit long-winded and not particularly clear. But would, would you like to elaborate on your interest in, say, uh, early Renaissance? in terms of abstraction, mm. and colour and form, and your own work in relation to it, perhaps. Well, you, you know, with the Renaissance, the, uh, um, the, the, the art was essentially Romanesque. You know, those kind of, kind of iconic Christ mm. and disciple or whatever, um, with the same very symmetrical face and so on. And those early Renaissance painters sort of thought, we can't get the message across better than that. And uh, um, so they start to animate the figures a bit more, you know, and uh, really get the message across. I mean, yeah, that wonderful Giotto of uh, um, the kiss, you know, when the uh, uh, nasty piece of work, you know, Judas, coming up and looking at, about to kiss Christ. And, uh, um, but their eyeball, their eyes, you know, are just directly at one another. You know, you can see there's a lot going on. You know what you're doing, you know what you're doing. It's, uh, yeah. And that's terrific, and it gradually gets more baroque, doesn't it? You know, more and more swirly, and uh, well, all sorts of yeah, yeah, way, yeah. But that's a very strange abstraction, isn't it? That baroque aris arabesque sort of shapes and so on. Yeah, it certainly it didn't go from Romanesque to baroque. You know, it had to go through a whole. Yeah. And the Baroque isn't really quite so interesting, I think. Mm. I like it in architecture. Mm. 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 Thank you. Has that answered your question? <laughs> I have no idea what I was talking about. But you were very clear. Thank you. Sure. Hi, hello. Uh -huh. 
question. I don't yeah, can, can you speak up? My question is uh, not as elevated as Dr. Brown's. I don't think it's, it's entirely uh, technical material, so I, I hope I don't offend you. I offend myself. I was interested to hear you talk about colour and tone or chroma and value in this mm. thing. And I think one of the things that's visible, especially in this painting, is yeah. the it's been a long time, it could long term interest, you know. Yeah. I was yeah. hoping you might say something about what happens when value is so close and chroma and value are so close to one another that there's a scintillating effect. It varies all the time, you know? Big areas of uh, the first um, uh, um, occasion I saw this was uh, in a bright green uh, lift in the Goode Street station in London, you know, classical lift. Mind your eyes, please. Mind it all, please. <laughs> but uh, it was green and somebody painted Beware the Doors in red in this whole thing and it just ripped you know, the, uh, if there wouldn't have been the same thing with a larger area of red, for instance. Optically, it was fine pieces of all part. And, well, um, I, I, yeah, it, uh, <coughs> for me, and with that, perhaps one can see it better than these, is one can compensate for chroma with tone. So that if you've got a dull color and a bright yellow, by making the dull color lighter than the yellow, you know, it'll get a zip off it. But uh, <laughs> that's food for thought. <laughs> <laughs>